Welcome to Top 5 with Joey Casada. Starring Joey Casada. Team Jesus, my friend. No! Am I walking around, Park? Co starring Ernie Palooza. And the doctor, Tommy Snyder. Goddamn. Now here's your host, Joey Casada. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Top Five. I'm your host, Joey Casada. And I'm Tony Danza. Welcome to our show. You are no Tony Danza. Maybe, maybe Danny DeVito. Uh, that Actually, that would have worked better, probably. <laughs> That's a good good thing they were, they were both stars of, which let's we'll get right into our topic this week. This was really probably I know we've done a lot of topics. We're almost at 50 episodes already. Wow. We've done Beatles songs and favorite movies of all time and so many different categories. This one was the hardest for me to choose because I have so many that I love. So today we're doing the top five favorite sitcoms. I had to look up what sitcom meant. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you know what? That's a good question. What does a sitcom mean? Well, as I said, I looked it up. Um, situation comedy, which is the ca same characters in the same environment, and but getting into uh, situations that lead to comic conclusions <laughs> very well done now see to me there's way more to it than that I, there's a couple shows that i know you're gonna have maybe one or two whatever there are certain shows i don't consider sitcoms even though they might be comedies they might be this they might be that to me a sitcom is old school and i don't know if you know what this means those three mostly those three camera shoot you know, sitcoms where there's a stage setting and there's, you know, sometimes a studio audience, those type, that's what I think of as a sitcom. There's plenty of shows out there that are, that are very funny. And, but I also think a sitcom, and this is not a rule. This is not an Ernie rule. I feel like a sitcom needs to also be 30 minutes. What do you ah, think of this? Let me see if I, if my show follows that. Nope. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> and that's not, you know, I don't think that can necessarily uh, is what a sitcom is defined as. It's just to me, growing up as a kid, sitcoms were very one specific thing and all other shows were very one specific thing. You know, growing up with Cheers and so on and so forth. And then you had Miami Vice and you had all these other shows. They were dis very distinguished, you know, differences between the two, distinguishable differences. Whereas the hour shows usually tended to be the action shows, the more serious shows, and the half hour shows were, were the funny shows. Yeah, I see what you mean. And uh, yeah, um, but that's not true anymore. But yeah, I, I definitely see. Yeah, there, are, there have been exceptions over the years. All right, let, let's more, dive right in. What do, more, what do recently, you more recently. Ooh, yeah. how, rec how recently are we talking? I got one show. Uh, I got one show that finished in 2020, and I, have another, I had another one that's still going. Jesus, oh, we, we're definitely going to have a lot of different ones today. All right, let's do this, Aaron. Our top five favorite sitcoms. You're up. Number five. Uh, I think you're going to have this one on your list. My number five was Seinfeld. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. I thought this was the baby's room. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I was in the pool! I was in the pool! Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me one second. Hello? Hi, would you be interested in switching over to TMI long distance service? Oh, gee, I, I can't talk right now. Why don't you give me your home number and I'll call you later? Uh, well, I'm sorry, we're not allowed to do that. Oh, I guess you don't want people calling you at home. Uh, no. Well, now you know how I feel. 
Um, calling this a show about nothing is stupid, first of all, in my opinion. To me, it was about putting the tiniest parts of life under a microscope and how a comedian would get his material. But the real reason the show sticks out for me is how unlikable the characters were. <laughs> Which, if you remember any shows before this, they always had people that you wanted to be friends with. Not this one. And of course, George Costanza is one of the funniest characters in TV history. Well, I mean, let's start right there. You know, we, we teased Ernie for years that no. the writers of Seinfeld had a camera in your house somewhere and they were filming you 24 seven because you are Costanza. You know that. I did not know that people teased me. I, I never noticed. Not only in stature, my friend, but p everything from being cheap, from, you know, uh, <laughs> Your way with the ladies, there's a lot of similarities there. Okay, I'll buy that. <laughs> no, great pick. Yeah, it, it's it will be on my list later, but you're so right with the characters. It there you you actually despise them at, at certain points of the show. You're like, ah, but but the interaction and and it's almost like their their characters that they built in that show are the bad sides of all of us that we always, you know, suppress or kind of hide Jerry or Elaine or George or Kramer. They usually do the things my, my subconscious tells me not to do. They go there. And before this show, people always thought the uh, people that make TV shows that you wouldn't want to watch that. Seinfeld started that. Yeah. And now it's I all over the place. Look at um, It's always sunny. For example, I'm yeah, you're right. Yeah, Seinfeld was definitely the beginning of that type of comedy. I couldn't agree more. It's good. Nice pick. Nice pick. I have a feeling it's on your list somewhere as well. It might be. You son of a bitch. I think I have two shows that are going to be, be on your list, actually. I think I know the other one, too. I think we have the same number one. <laughs> no, we definitely... I don't know if we have the same number one. Um, My number five definitely is not on your list. This is a show that I loved growing up. Even now, when it comes on, I love watching it. Is it the funniest show? Is it not even close to as funny as some of the others on my list and probably your list? Definitely not. But just th this show is the opposite of Seinfeld. This is purely feel good. This is, you know, cookie cutter all the way. And I'm talking the Brady Bunch, baby. 15. Hey, you guys. Oh, my no! Marcia, stop. You okay? You hurt. I'm oh, really sorry. Oh. Again, always, it's more of a, of a growing up thing for me. It, I would watch it religiously. The kids on the show I would relate to, especially Bobby Brady, the drummer, of course. Um, but it was, it was just a feel-good show. I love the hijinks they would always get into. I love the musical aspect later on in the, in the shows with the, when the, the silver platters were formed and the Brady six, just a great fun show all around. You know, I watched it recently with Deidre and it's not quite, as you pointed out, it's not as funny as you remember, but there was one scene that was so funny <laughs> that we watched it like 10 times. We had to call the whole family in and they kept watching it again. It's when, uh, Marsha gets hit by the football. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I mean, that's an epic, iconic sitcom scene. When she gets hit with that football, it's amazing. Incredible. Oh, all right. That's my number five. What do you got, Aaron? Number four. I don't even know if you know this show. Um, The Good Place. And now the end is near. So I face the final curtain. Wow, what the hell? Walk it off, Lululemon. I'll say it. I do not know it. Uh, this is not just comedy, but it's the type of show that gives you a lot to discuss and think about afterwards. Um, I'll tell you the beginning of the show, because the show is so complicated. We could spend the whole day talking about this one show. But the beginning of the show follows a dead person that gets into heaven by mistake. Somehow 
the accountants that work for heaven and hell make up make a boo boo somehow. Okay. This person does not belong in heaven. I like it. Uh, oh, but it's it's she doesn't belong there. But that's just the springboard. It it it's great. They give a pretty solid explanation of the mathematics used to decide if you go to the good place or the bad place. That <laughs> it's all mathematical, you know. Um, certain sins are worth certain points. It's it's really crazy show. <laughs> oh, it gets into ethics, philo- philosophy. Uh, I wish it never ended. It's in- crazy stuff. Who stars in this show? Kristen Bell. Uh, Veronica Mars? Yeah, I was going to say Veronica Mars. Really? Oh, I, I never even heard of it. I got to check it out. What ch- what uh, network? Who, who knows that anymore? I, maybe Hulu. Well, where the hell do you watch it? I turn on the uh, the fire stick and I click, click on a show. I don't Wait. know. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're not talking about an illegal fire stick now, are you? Well, not. I would never do that. Do you remember the illegal like- cable boxes when we were kids? Did you ever have an illegal cable box? Uh, maybe. I used to have the one you. It was the, the we had the red button in the back, and we used to have to hold it to like almost boot it, and so, yep. and something you'd let go sometime, and it would come on. And suddenly you have all the the pay per views, everything, and then you just keep watching the same movie every two hours. It's true, yeah, you had everything, but you still only watch one thing. Good one. Nice one. I, I don't know it. I will, I will check it out. All right. My number four, I'm going to move mine down a slot because I don't want you to say it before me. I think this one might be on your list. I'm not positive. I'm talking about you, you would never get away with this show today. All in the family. That's great. Hey, well, I don't want to stay here. Are you going to take me? Come on, take me out of this change. How are you doing, Mr. Bunker? Jeez, that was fast. <laughs> Bunker? <laughs> Again, it, it, you know, it's one of those time, t- to me, timeless shows. You, you know, some of the humor would be crushed today in today's society, just politically and racial and, and all of that stuff. But it, it stands this, the test of time because people who are watching it and criticizing it for those things that I just said, they don't realize that they're making fun of Archie for feeling the way he is. Archie is obviously a bigot and he's a racist and he's, but he's, he's so naive that they're showing you this isn't, this is a naive idiot. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So, you know, they're making fun of it in a way that I think it was educational at the time. And, and, and and unfortunately with today's society, I think it would go over people's heads and it would just be criticized. Well, people nowadays they hear a certain word, yeah, and then and then and then that's it. They're shutting everything out. They're no context even, needed. You're right. They're not even they're not even watching the show anymore. Yep, and it's a shame because it, it it's such an amazing show. There's again, it's one of those shows that is not only comedy. There's a lot of good, meaningful things going on in the shows, but of course, the comedy is really. At the forefront, you know, Carol O'Connor, Archie Bunker and his wife, Edith, it, it, they're really just two of the best characters in TV. And of course, Meathead and Gloria, you know, li- Archie living with Meathead in the same house has that friction and constant comedy that, you know, you could just same thing like Seinfeld. They will fight over anything. There's one of my favorite scenes ever. Uh, Meathead. That's Archie's son-in-law, Mike. He calls him Meathead because he tells him he's dead from the neck up. And he's 
He's putting on his shoes and socks. And it's, it's just a ridiculous scene. It means nothing. He's putting on his shoes and socks and he puts a sock on and then he puts his shoe on his right foot. And he goes, to, he goes to put the other sock on and Archie goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold it, hold it, hold it. What are you doing here? Why? What about the other foot? There ain't no sock on it. I'll get to it. Don't you know that the whole world puts on a sock and a sock and a shoe and a shoe? And a shoe? I like to take care of one foot at a time. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. It's just as quick my way. Wait a minute, that ain't the prank. You see what I don't? Don't keep doing it. Listen to me. <laughs> Suppose there's a fire in the house and you got to run for your life. Your way, all you got on is one shoe and a sock. My way, you got on a sock and a sock. You see, you're even. Suppose it's raining or snowing outside. Your way with a sock on each foot, my feet would get wet. My way with a sock and a shoe on one foot, I could hop around and stay dry. Complete chaos scene means nothing, but they can argue over anything. Yeah. Great show. Archie Bunker is in my top three uh, funniest characters ever. Absolutely. He but, might, yeah, he might be one or two for me all time. George Costanza is right above him, and there's one more that's coming up a little later. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, Archie, again, Archie, all in the family would be one or two for me, but there are some clunk clunker episodes. There's some episodes later on that I didn't love that much. Some of the other shows I'm going to, I'll have above it. Every episode I watch is killer. All right, Aaron, what do you got? Number three. Ah, uh, this show is actually still going on. The Simpsons. Got any spare change, man? Yes, and you ain't getting it. Everybody wants something for nothing. I'm old. Gimme, gimme, gimme. <sighs> All right, he's trying to describe how great this show is to someone who never watched it. It's hard. It doesn't sound like a good show, but it has great social commentary and the jokes are much more complicated than, for example, South Park, which tries a lot of the same stuff. But in The Simpsons, the, the jokes just, they, um, they bite deeper some, for me. The storytelling is better and the background characters are really, really fleshed out. Like that, you feel like th that place, uh, Springfield, is a real place. And it's not. You know, early 90s was a pretty good time for sitcoms. Yeah, not bad. Well, we'll talk about that later. I think there's so many. I mean, I grew up 70s and 80s. I just gravitate a lot towards that stuff because it's my youth. And I remember watching them every day. But you're right. What, what, the 90s is when sitcoms got smart. Yep. Yeah, great pick. I mean, it's one of, unfortunately, it's one of those shows that I never got into. And because there's so much to kind of get into because there's so many seasons, it's always seemed like a big undertaking to me. And I never, I never went there. I, I, I can honestly say I've never seen a full episode of The Simpsons. I've seen clips, everything I've always seen that I, I always loved. But it's one of those shows, like you said, there's so much back character development that you got to start from the beginning, I think, and to really feel what the show is talking about. I think it's my kids that actually got me into the show. I also never watched it. And I just happened to walk into the room and um, there was schools of the future. It was like a, a flash forward and they showed the back of the class and it had like desks on top of desks because the classes were so overcrowded. And I was just saying, this isn't a cartoon. I mean, it, uh, I'm a teacher, so I, just, I know where th the way things are going. And I just took a closer look once I saw like they were going in that direction of yeah. comedy. They, they had a lot to say. Yeah, a great pick. I mean, if you look on, there's a lot of polls out there that will list The Simpsons as the best sitcom of all time. It's been around the longest, that's for yeah. sure. How many seasons? I mean, it's still currently airing, right? Yeah. Um, longest sitcom ever, I'm assuming. Longest anything ever. It started in 1989. 
Wow. Crazy. Nice pick. Nice pick. All right. My number three. I've been flip-flopping this back and forth. There's one from the 90s that I really love. And then there's one from the 70s that I really love. I'm going to go with the 70s one just because it's more of my youth. The, the 90s one might actually, it is definitely a better show. But the one that I, when I say the words, I'm happier when I say these words because I, I remember watching this so much. Three's Company. Just one of my favorites. I would watch it. I believe it was on either six o'clock or six thirty every night. Channel five growing up. You know, I never, I never really saw it uh, when it was airing that much. I saw obviously the, the the syndication stuff when it was on reruns. So, but it was one of those shows religiously. Jack Tripper, just you know, the physical comedy and all the predicaments he would get himself in when he'd have one girl up in his apartment that he was cooking for and he'd have to go run downstairs to Larry's apartment and change his clothes for some weird, weird reason to get into a new outfit to go to the other girl. And it was just always chaos, fun show. Every episode never, never really had one of those clunker episodes. I thought every episode was great. Always looked forward to watching it. You think it was a coincidence? His last name was Tripper. <laughs> Every every episode he falls over something. Everything. Oh, but what a genius physical comedy. You know what I mean? Just his 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 ability to do that stuff and the faces he would make after was it was unbelievable. I mean, it was I I, I can't even imagine when they started that show, that was part of the show. It must have just been his genius, you know, the way he interpreted scripts. It's it's so funny to watch him get hurt. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> But it was again my again my youth growing up thinking about these shows and getting knowing religiously okay it's X time I know exactly what show is going to be on and then every once in a while you know four or five years they would change the schedule and it would you know throw me for a loop but six o'clock every night right after dinner or during dinner sometimes Three's Company would be on in my house. It, it was a great one. All right, Aaron, what do you got? Number two. Early 90s again. The Wonder Years. The female reproductive organs look like this. <laughs> Unfortunately, it looked more like a cow's head to me. Now, who can tell me what these are? Yes. Theirs? Ooh. This was my number one for many years. And my new number one actually steals a lot of the episodes from the show <laughs> in retrospect. Uh, when TV Guide ranked the top TV episodes of all time, Wonder Years actually had two episodes in the top 50. Wow. And you know, I love lists. I love lists. <laughs> this is another one of the shows that I never got into that I've, I actually tried to wa start watching this recently and I couldn't find where it was streaming. It, this is something that should have been right up my alley, you know, growing up coming of age story of this, of this little boy. It's exactly what I should love. And it's weird. I never got into it. I actually watched it when it was on and I remember the first episode, all right, this might be good. But the second episode, they went in, in a, such a direction with a joke. The um, Winnie Cooper's older brother has just been found dead in the Vietnam War. He's dead. And Winnie and Kevin walk off. And then Kevin, and they start making out. But she's, but she's terribly 
hurt and everything. She just found out her brother died. And anyway, uh, a couple a day later, I'm at the wake, and his ghost appears, and his ghost talking to Kevin goes, "I can't believe you, <laughs> that you are. Uh, I'm. I just died, and you're trying to jump my sister's bones." And then he goes, "My type of guy." <laughs> <He> no. goes, <laughs> And I was like, holy <laughs> crap, <laughs> like that. It, it blew me away that uh, they would do that in a comedy TV show at that time. I mean, if that doesn't sell the show to everyone listening to this episode right now, I don't know what does. I want to go watch it pre-immediately right now. I'll never forget that moment. <laughs> Again, sounds exactly what, what I love. I'm going to go. I think I got to try that before I go to uh, The Good Place. One to years, I have to... I have to uh, I got to jump on. Twenty years is going to take longer. I think there's more seasons, but it's good. Yeah, but now I'll fly through them. And I also have a fire stick. Oh, oh boy. I've heard of those. (laughs) All right. My number two, unfortunately, was already named. And that is Seinfeld. Funny. And I don't know if it was, it was your case too. I didn't watch Seinfeld when it was originally on. I watched I think I started watching around season five or six. It was later. I did not watch Seinfeld from the get-go. Not something I was interested, never cared about it. And then through reruns, it was on channel 11 late at night, maybe 11 o'clock. I started watching it. And then I remember I would set my VCR tape for people out there. Remember the VCR tapes. They even had timers. I would set the timer for every night at 11 to record it because I was always at rehearsal or something and I, was, I, w- I would always miss it. And I, w- I remember even calling my mom, Ma, make, make sure I would be on a payphone. Make sure Seinfeld's taping. Go, go look and see, is the red light on? Is, is the, wait, can you hear the tape? Is the tape moving? It's not moving? Press record for me, please, come on. Because I would want I would want to watch it when I got home and I really got into it that way. But all the things you said, just a groundbreaking show. I was never able to get the timer to work on the VCR. It was always blinking 12 o'clock all the time. Well, that's why I used to have to call my mom because I, w- I never trusted it either. So I used to have to call. I, w- I would tape Seinfeld and then I would tape Star Trek Next Generation. And you couldn't just press record. You had to press record and play at the same time. The same. It's like, a, uh, why was that? I, I, maybe like a childproof thing? Who the hell knows? Why did you have to do both? You're so right. And it was hard to press. <laughs> All right, we're flying. Let's see. Let's run down yours before you get to number one. We got Seinfeld at number five. Number four, The Good Place. Number three, The Simpsons. Number two, The Wonder Years. Number one, I might have to argue with you on this one, but I know what your number one is. Give it to me. Freaks and Geeks. Bill, that is not sexy. Yes, it is. Bill, it looks like you're having a seizure. <laughs> Women love this. They don't care that reruns fat because he's got the moves. Anybody that hasn't watched this show, all my uh, thousands of uh, viewers, should go watch it right now. All of the actors I'm going to name right now were unknowns when they started the show. James Franco, Seth Rogen, Jason Segal, Linda Cardinelli, Cardellini, excuse me, Martin Starr, and here's the guest stars, also totally unknowns, Rashida Jones, Shia LaBeouf, and of course, the god, Judd Apatow. The show's producers were so sure of the greatness of this show that they said no to Britney Spears appearing in one episode. I never, I never heard of that. They got the director of The Matrix to come in to direct a dodgeball scene that was less than 10 minutes long. Here's some other lists that I looked up today. Wait, did, did The Matrix had, had already come out or no? Yeah. I didn't know. I love that dodgeball scene. Yep. Less than 10 minutes long, and they brought in the director of The Matrix. Here's, some, here's two lists that I, I thought was interesting. Rolling Stone ranked it as the 11th greatest TV series of all time. And TV Guide 
list of 60 shows that were canceled too soon, it was number one. Wow. And tell the people the theory on why it was canceled. What was it up against? Uh, who, who wants to be a millionaire? Was when it first came out. Yeah. yeah, that was a juggernaut. Right. If people don't remember, who wants to be a millionaire took over the world for, for a good six months. That was what all everyone talked about. It was a prime time game show that families could watch together. It was all over for everything else on television. There's some parts of me, not all, but there's some parts that prefers it this way, that it's one of our secrets. Yeah. Did I introduce you to the show, Ern? No. <laughs> no, Ernie, Ernie is definitely our whole crowd. So we used to have a Hampton house and Ernie would bring up freaks and geeks. And again, this is a party house. We have a giant pool, giant backyard. Everyone's drinking. Everyone's having fun outside. Ernie would throw in a cassette of Freaks and Geeks, a VHS, in our bedroom. Our bedroom, by the way, had no uh, shades on it, no curtains, no nothing. We used to have to put garbage bags on the windows because we would want to watch the TV. Because Black we, the we call them. <laughs> and Ernie would plop in Freaks and Geeks. Most, almost everyone in the house had never heard of it. Uh, you had already turned me on to it and a couple of the other people in our crowd, like Billy. And... We would pop it in. We'd start the ball rolling, laughing and stuff. Before we knew it, the whole entire house was in our bedroom, 30 people watching Freaks and Geeks and roaring with laughter. One of my favorite shows of all time. But I don't consider it a sitcom. Because it's an hour long? <laughs> because it's an hour long. Just to me, the content is is not sitcom-y to me. It's not, it's not that sitcom world that I think of when I think of a sitcom. It's it's way too mature to be a sitcom. I I, I hear you. I'm not gonna go back on my word, but I agree. <laughs> is it an amazing show? Absolutely. What's what clip should I insert, Ern? I mean, there's so many. Obviously, I don't know if people know this, but our intro music is one of the clips of, of our favorite clip from that show when Bill is dancing. I think that song is actually written by the guy who created the show, too. Yes, by Judd Apatow. Shh. Don't say anything. We're not paying you any royalties. Shh. Uh, uh, what, am I, what am I inserting here, Aaron? There's a lot. I love Bill dancing. I love Sam dancing with, in front of the mirror with the suit. <laughs> so good. You know what I found at the end of my bed this morning? It's heard. It's heard. The, you know, you know, it's a good one, which I, maybe it's not a good one to air. The prank phone call. Yes, that's uh, one of the funniest scenes ever. <laughs> the funniest oh. scenes ever. So Ernie texted me last week. This show is so good and we love it so much. We might even start a side podcast and literally discuss every episode of this show. Am I, am I wrong? I, I would like to do it. Was this my idea? Due to legal rights, uh, you told me I have to say yes. Yes. Perfect. Well done, Ern. Your check is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Great pick. I'm not going to argue with it again. I knew it would be your number one. It would definitely be in my top five. It wouldn't be my number one. But again, I don't consider it a sitcom. It would probably make my top five shows of all time. Maybe. I don't know if there's enough of a body of work. What was it? One season, right? Yep. So that would be the only reason it might not even make my top five list of all time shows just because how many episodes are in 12? 12 was shown on TV. There's actually 18. Did we see? I saw all, all 18. I must have. I hope so. Give me what's one that didn't air. Um, Kim Kelly's parents. Oh, yeah. Dinner. When she goes to, to dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Great one. She goes screaming out of the house with, and she runs, she goes to her car and stuff. Yep. And, that, and that's why um, Channel 4 refused to show it. Showing Great. parents um, being um, abusive to their children. They said, we, we can't have it out as a sitcom. In a weird way, it's very MASH-like, meaning MASH was such a funny show, but it had a lot of serious moments. Freaks and Geeks is like that, too. If there's anyone out there that's a Stranger Things fan, which Stranger Things is one of my favorite shows ever. I, I really love it. I love the the interaction of the kids and the adults is flawless to me. 
Freaks and Geeks is very similar. There's a lot of similarities between the kids in Freaks and Geeks and the kids on Stranger Things. Really, you know, it has that Goonies aspect, but more serious, of course. Sure. All right, here's my top five. So we got number five, The Brady Bunch. Number four, All in the Family. Number three, Three's Company. Number two, Seinfeld. Number one. You sound like you're so much older than me. <laughs> Which is <gross. laughs> It's true, you're right. <laughs> well, you want to hear all. This is the oldest show out of all of them. It's not even close. It's been my favorite show probably since I'm five or six years old. I watched it every day. If I could watch it every day now, I would. It never gets old. One, no episodes ever get old for me. And I'm talking about Ralph and Ed, The Honeymooners. I laugh when he looks at you. That's all. No, no, don't, don't, don't get discouraged. Now, just stand up there. So much for the offense. Now, a little defense practice. Limber up your body. Skip around like this. Shoot a few left shots. Reach for the nose. Into the... That's it. That's it. Face me, Ralph. Look, see? That's it. Throw through. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. See? That's it. All right. Cover up your face, Ralph. Cover up your face. face. Cover up your face. Reach <laughs> You're an old man. It's it's the perfect show. There's no there's no scenery. They're in Ralph's kitchen the whole time. Nothing ever happens, but it's pure comedy gold. You know, my my show wrestling with <clears throat> my show wrestling with Joey Licious is very based on the honeymoon. Is the characters that are me and my, and my buddy Scally growing up. We were the biggest honeymoon honeymooner fans in the world. We would literally watch it every night together. I would call him up on the phone and we would watch it while we were on the phone together. And the characters of Joey Licious and Scally in my books and this, and the show that we're developing have so many elements of Ralph Cramden and Ed Norton. It's the exact dynamic. And speaking of Joey Licious, a new episode just premiered uh, with Jake the Snake Roberts. Check that out on YouTube. Uh, I'll post the link now. But again... Everything that I do in my life is based off the honeymooners. Everything. All my, when I talk, my dialogue, Ralph was like one of the biggest influence of me, good or bad growing up. Yeah, I watched it. Uh, it was used to be big with the um, New Year's Eve. They have to show uh, the entire series yep. before Twilight, Twilight Zone became popular. I mean, before they started showing Twilight Zone is what I mean. Over New Year's Eve. My wife always tells me I'm like Ralph. I always have a new scheme, a new get rich quick scheme. I got the, you know, the gadget with the with the the knife and the spoon to do the commercials. And I got this. I'm do always doing so many projects. She says I'm the modern day Ralph Gramden. And it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Great list. All right. Give me one or two honorable mentions, Aaron. What do you got? I got three to choose from. Um taxi. Yeah, that's on mine. Um I was thinking of Taxi, and it, you know, it's an honorable mention, so it just missed my list. We're talking about Tony Danza before. He was on TV every year from 1978 to 1992 with Taxi and then Who's the Boss? Yeah. And even funnier, there was such little faith in his acting ability that they changed the first names of his character in both shows to his <laughs> real first name on purpose. Is that why? Yeah. Uh, but what did they think they were going to say hey fred and he wouldn't he wouldn't answer yep he was not an actor <laughs> he was he was a boxer right matter of fact he was still boxing even while he taxi was going he was still was getting into fights he still was doing fights i mean you could see that in, in his acting in taxi he's very young he's very much you know a naive boxer maybe and he was he's a boxer in taxi too he plays a boxer i think but who's the boss was it i think a very i bet you even the network was surprised at the success of Who's the Boss. Yeah. Give me one I, more, Ryan. What do you got? I, oh, the other one um, that I think people should know about is Soap. Oh, yes. I don't know why this show is never shown. No one ever talks about it. But to me, it's a very important show in history. So many firsts. Agre and, is, now, is that, a, is that a one season show too? No, Soap was um 77 to 81. Oh, okay. But Billy yeah. Crystal, yeah. a lot of big stars on that too, right? Billy Crystal's just one, though. The cast is huge and incredible. 
spinoff was was Benson. Yeah. Yep. Most people don't even know that. Soap is a great show, but you're so right. Never mentioned by anyone. Never. I've never, ever in my life flipped the channel and soap was on ever. There was actually a lot of protest about this show before it even came on because the subject material was so uh, raunchy. Wow. Yeah, I, mean, I, remember I was not allowed to watch it, so I was um, up really? in my room with, with the volume as low as possible. So my parents <laughs> know I was watching it when I was a kid. What were the years again? Seventy-seven to eighty-one. Wow. Yeah. I, again, even though I grew up in the eighties and I love eighties sitcoms like Family Ties, like Growing Pains, and all those those eighties, for some reason the seventies sitcoms are even more prominent to me. You know, they blended into the 80s, but I think it's because of reruns. You know, regular sitcoms were on, you know, eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night and stuff like that. We, I was either sleeping or doing my homework or playing drums, or whatever. The reruns either were on late at night when I was already in bed or earlier in the day that I could watch them. So I always gravitated to stuff like different strokes, facts of life. What's happening was one of my favorite shows ever. Loved what's happening. Um, just uh, even mar- even later on, Married with Children was a great one. Uh, Married with Children got a little, they jumped the shark a little bit later on in, in these seasons. I thought they went too far with the, with the, the antics of, of, of the family. But early on, that was one of the, the crazy, when you saw that show the first time, it was like, wow, I can't believe they're going where they're going with some of these jokes. It, it was a first. This was a good one. Again, this was this was probably my hardest episode. It's so hard to narrow down these sitcoms. Everyone you named and I named, the ones that I watched that, that you said anyway, I can flip the channels and sit on, I'm a sitcom first person. I will take a sitcom over any type of show, any day of the week. A sitcom to me is a mindless thing you just watch you enjoy some of the other bigger tv shows action tv shows episodic tv shows you gotta immerse yourself in sitcoms are always fun flipping the channels watch 15 minutes of jack tripper falling on his face while he's cooking i'm 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 a happy man (laughs) all right Aaron, what do you got last words uh i i for some reason i'm not getting any subscribers so if you want to see more of me um, subscribe to my OnlyFans account. <laughs> where, do we fi- where do we find this account? Um, OnlyFans.com, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Good promo, Aaron. But you can really find us at, you can send us your emails at top 5 with Joey at gmail.com. That's top 5 with Joey at gmail.com. Let us know what you think of the show. Let us know what you think of these lists that we've been coming up with. Tell us your favorite sitcoms of all time. If you watch us, Please leave some comments on YouTube. Give us give us some likes. If you just if you're just a listener, I'm actually curious. Give me some emails that, or all you people out there that just listen, because we put a lot of effort into editing and putting clips and sound clips and all that stuff. I'm curious to see if there's because there's a lot of you that just listen. We get believe it or not, we have more list way more listeners than watchers, which is weird because the I would be way more into a YouTube show like we do. But I guess people are on the go a lot and they, they just listen. So if you're a listener on iTunes or Spotify or anything like that, if you're on iTunes, give us a five-star review. Please let us know what you're liking about the show, even what you're disliking. Uh, if you want the doctor back on, he's off into you know parts unknown right now. He's missing. We don't know where he is. But he's on the beach somewhere, I think, uh, passed out. But we'll have him back soon. Don't worry. We'll have some more guest stars coming up. Earn, this was a good one. Thank you. We'll see you next time.